How's it going everybody? My name is Isaac. So I recently got a ZWO uh, 2600 a mono and um, instead of an unboxing video, I wanted to do something different. So as you guys know, I've been using Nina for a while. I actually transitioned from uh, APT to Nina and I thought it would be a good idea to just show how I get my stuff set up and, and for any of you guys that's doing a transition from APT to Nina or just wanting to learn Nina as well, um, that just, this is just kind of like my take on it. So it is a bit a bit lengthy, but I just wanted to cover kind of the most important stuff that I thought. So I'm really excited to uh, start using that camera. Uh, but for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and take you outside and that way we can go ahead and uh, get do a screen share on that. All right, so I set up my my rig and everything. Um, it's 5:58 right now, and I'm just waiting for it to get um, dark so I can start to get polar lined, and that way I can get everything connected. So let's go ahead and um, take a look at first uh, where to download Nina. As most of you know, it's here in uh, Nina, <laughs> and um, they have this version 2.1. Um, that's a stable version, and. Um, all you have to do is just you know click here and you can go ahead and download it but before um i would say with the download i would highly recommend that you go down here and um i'll show you a preview of how i use the uh, offline sky map now the offline sky map is really fast um, when it comes to framing and then if you're like somebody like me that likes to go on the field and maybe you just want to i don't know all of a sudden switch uh, targets and get it framed this helps so much um in the in the event that you want to do that and you don't have any internet connection otherwise if you don't want to download that that's completely fine Nina does have another framing tool which is absolutely fine but it just uh, works off of your internet connection um the other thing i really highly recommend is the astap uh, plate solving uh, software now this is the one that i use um, and then um, what I really love about this is you just download it and you pretty much tell Nina and I'll show you that as well where it's at and that's pretty much about it. So I have downloaded the large star database and the small star database. Um, I didn't download any of these, uh, but I downloaded uh, this here um, and that's going to be for the plate solving. And plate solving is, is good if you do have your mount connected um, to your PC. Um, I'm not too sure how it would work with Nina without it, but um, if you do, which a lot of these programs now today, um, a lot of the mounts, should I say, uh, you can connect it directly to the PC. So with that being said, you guys, let's go ahead and I'll open up Nina. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually gonna go ahead and set up a new profile um, and I just wanted to show you how I get set up specifically with my 2600 and my Loom Optics Z61 because it's a new camera and a new filter wheel because I've never um, programmed this filter, filter wheel in. It was just a filter wheel that, filter wheel that I had um, kind of as a backup for my other filter. Okay, so right here, whoops. <laughs> so right here, um, I already have this, but um, this is going to be a different profile. So I'm just going to say, okay, guys, so since I already have a profile, I'm just going to load it, uh, but I'm going to take you in um, to the new profile, to a new profile. And that way I can show you how I do it here. Okay, so under the options tab here, this is where I have all my uh, my setups and my combinations. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do another one. So right here, I'm gonna load it. Okay, so when you get into Nina, it's gonna look just like this. <laughs> and so right here you have, um, it's basically gonna default it. And the first thing that I like to do is I actually like to change um, all this. And again, this is gonna be in the options. And so um, I like, I believe it's the shark one. Yeah, so I like this one. That's just me personal. And then you can just go ahead and name it here. So I'm just gonna name it um, Z61 and 2600. And then 
uh, IGQ45. I mean, you can be as um, specific if you want. I mean, it is what it is. And um, once you guys have that, you just have to click out of it. And then it will just go ahead and save. Now, as you recall, the Sky Survey cache folder. Now, this is where that download I was telling you guys about for the Sky Atlas. All you basically have to do is just uh, put it here. So you just um, click on the three dots and you tell uh, Nina where that folder is and boom, it comes up right here. And I'll show you guys how to do that in a bit here. So uh, you can pretty much change your uh, color scheme any, however you want, but I really like this shark. So, and then right here, um, you can set your latitude and longitude manually. But right now when I connect my iOptron because <laughs> I have GPS, I like to cheat, so I'll show you guys that in a bit here. All right, so under the options again, you will still wanna be there, okay? You go under the equipment, and um, this is where you can put your telescope name. So I'm gonna go ahead and put Z61, and then the focal length, which is going to be 360, oops. Okay, so 360, and then you can uh, put the focal ratio in here. Okay, focal ratio of 5.9 and then settle time uh, five seconds is fine um, you always want to leave this as is because you always want to sync your telescope and your um, computer should we say after that and if you have any weather or, um, or if right here if you use Stellarium you can go ahead and choose Stellarium so that's, that's fine here uh, moving on to autofocus so if you guys have the autofocus uh, stuff um, you guys can go ahead and program it here i do so i'm just gonna go ahead and look up my stuff really quick so because i already have um my my other settings i'm just gonna set it here focus your settle time it's two seconds overshoot and 150. Okay, so if you guys use an autofocuser, you guys can go ahead and do that. This is the settings that I use specifically for my autofocuser. And I like to um, do the trends in hyperbolic. Thank you to Nick Ivanov for helping me out because this really helps. So um, everything else is pretty much the same. Uh, dome, there's no dome here. Imaging. Okay, so this is where you can pretty much do whatever you got to do here. Um, I would recommend, uh, so this is the, the image pass, so I just leave it as is. But I would recommend that um, you go target name. And by the way, Joe, thank you for helping with this a long time ago. Um, I still use the same thing. Where is it at here? Ah, target name. Okay. Okay, so I like to put it here um, and you can just, uh, when you double click, it comes here obviously, and then control X and then control V to paste it. So the image, it's gonna do the target name, uh, the date and everything else like that. So I like to keep it like this. So the preview pattern, for example, will be like M33, 2015, this, and it's light frame. This is the time and all that stuff. And it, it works for me. So. Um, here on the right, this is for the meridian flip, if you guys want to control the meridian flip. And I think I have everything pretty much the same. Sorry, I'm checking everything on my notes here. <laughs> okay, and then um, I use Hocus Focus, which if you guys have an autofocuser, I would highly recommend that you use Hocus Focus. Okay, and then the files, I just leave them all the same. Okay, all right, and then to the plate solving, Plate solving, all right, so I already have ASTAP for the blind solver and uh, the plate solver, okay? The only thing that, um, and Joe recommended me uh, recommended me this too, is that you leave two seconds uh, for the exposure time because it, it tends to run into problems. And then um, I'm gonna set my filters right now, um, but I'm gonna do gain, bending, one arc minute, just leave all this the same. And then right here, um, if you guys are using ASTAP, you guys just want to tell uh, Nina where the ASTAP file folder is, and that's it. 
And what's really cool, you know, coming from uh, APT is that, you know, APT, you have to pretty much do like rocket science. You have to tell it like this and settings and this and that. Here in Nina, all you have to do is click ASTAP where it downloaded. And that's pretty much about it. That's all I have. That's it. So it's it's really awesome, you guys. Um, okay. Okay, so right here under equipment, uh, what I did is I, because I have a five position filter wheel and I haven't connected it yet, but I already know that it's five position. So you um, just click on the plus button like I did. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start naming the filters. So this one is S2, oops. S2. And by the way, I got the Optolong uh, three nanometer. So I'm really excited to test that out. Three. All right, and then the, I think I have luminance and then red. Red on that one, okay. So, I just like my stuff a certain way. <laughs> okay, and then let's go ahead and go back to the plate solving and then always select uh, the luminance or like maybe a, a broadband uh, filter. Uh, just so we won't run into problems because I have ran into problems. I was like, eh, those guys are not right. Uh, I ran into some problems where they had, uh, it couldn't find stars with like the HA uh, per se, and then it would just fail. So we don't want that. Okay. The other thing, so let's go to equipment. So nothing's connected here. The other thing I would recommend to set up beforehand would be go under your imaging tab. Okay. And then under the imaging tab, it's going to uh, initialize the layout and it has a bunch of stuff, you guys. So um, I like for say telescope, I don't need it. So I'm gonna take it off. Camera as well. Uh, filter wheel, I like it. Uh, maybe I'll just kind of drag it over here. Yeah, the focuser, I think I like it down over here. So uh, plate solving, I like, I'm gonna have it here. The HFR history, um, I'll just take it there. The HFR is usually in the image history. Uh, so dome, I don't use that, so I'm just going to come over here. Um, so the stuff that you don't think that you're going to use, just kind of, I don't know. Me, I just like to clean it up. Uh, I have used this in the past, but I really don't have a use for it now. Uh, star detection either. So just kind of put in the stuff that you will um, be using. And just take it from there. Vibration inspector. And then so like, for, for example, here, the focuser, I'm just going to drag it. Okay, never mind. I don't know what happened there. So you just get it and you drag it and then you just put it right here to this little tab. And then it's just like a little tab and that's it. And then it has a filter wheel. So like if, if you want, you, I can even take the filter wheel and then put it like over here. So um, that's pretty much that. Plate solving, it's good. And then if you guys see over here, um, like this is where all the stuff is at. So if you want to do like the telescope, it's there. Like if you just accidentally take it out, uh, the filter wheel, or the, I'm sorry, the camera is right here. Uh, focuser is right here. Um, I mean, everything's right here. The guider, which is th the guiding is right here. Uh, if you want to do the sequence, um, switch, weather, I mean, all, all basically all the stuff is here and you have some tools, which is uh, manual focus targets, which I like to actually use this one. So I'm going to put it here and it just adds it to your to your tab. And let's see autofocus, I think. OK, perfect. So that's an autofocus here. So I'm going to basically have all the ones that I want to um, pretty much uh, use. So imaging here, image history, autofocus, manual focus, uh, focuser. So just kind of do the layout as you want. Um, I like this right here. And so I'm just going to leave it as is. Matter of fact, I think I'm just going to take this here and put it like right under here. Yeah. Perfect. So, I mean, you can do it however you want, guys. All right. So I pretty much got everything uh, set up, I think. All right, you guys. So a short uh, time later here, I'm all polar lined. 
got my USBs connected and everything else. Um, everything is setting up right now. You can see that here. So it's ready to go, just because like I said, it's pretty much the first time I connect everything. Um, so in order for you to connect everything, okay, the fill EFF is ready to go, okay. So in order for you to connect everything, you go under here, the equipment tab, okay. Um, and then you can either refresh and then uh, just drop down here and then uh, 2600. So the 2600, that's the one I wanna connect and you hit the power button. By the way, guys, you want to make sure that all your drivers are installed, for example, for the camera, for the mount, uh, for your guide camera, the whole thing. And what's really cool here is that all this pre-fills. Okay, so all this pre-fills and then uh, your cooling. So I'm going to do minus five. And I always like to do a minimum duration of four minutes. I don't know. Um, and then warming as well. I always just like to do four minutes. That's just personal preference. Um, and then right here you can set your your gain setting which in this case it's going to be 150 and then i always just leave the, the the usb at 40 it doesn't really do anything for me so um so i got the camera connected and then let's go to the filter wheel and again I, you can refresh it or if not you can just go to the drop down and um filter wheel one through ascom that's my filter filter wheel just gonna connect here okay perfect and then you see guys how um, on the filters I already named them so it pretty much incorporated them uh, from there but if not then again you would go back into the options and to the equipment and then this is where it would have the five position filter wheel and then you just have to double click and do that but I already did that manually okay let's go back to the equipment and then if I want to change it, uh, for example, I want to do a really quick test exposure of HA. So you drop down, do the HA, and then change. And then you'll see, switch and filter, and boom, it's there. Okay, I have a focuser, so I'm going to go ahead and connect the focuser. So again, um, do ASCOM. And because I've already used this focuser, it already has uh, the position in it. So um, yeah, so I just have to make sure that um, the camera and scope is in focus, which I'm going to do the batten off mask here in just a moment. And then uh, telescope, okay. So the telescope uh, is the ioptron. So I believe it is the, let's see here. I believe it's this one, if I'm not mistaken. No, okay. My apologies. Okay. Yeah, it's this one here. Okay, so right here, this is where I said I was going to cheat. So it says the telescope, because I have GPS, is showing here, and Anina is there. So what I'm going to do is from telescope to Nina, boom. And therefore, Nina has my coordinates of where I'm at. And this is really cool, you guys. You can actually control. Um, Ioptron has their own specific uh, commander, which for that, this is for the IEQ45 Pro. And it's really nice. Uh, it has a mount, and you can do it here. Uh, you can slew, you can park, set the zero position. Uh, the whole thing but i pretty much just open this just to open it that way it can connect to nina and i really don't use this um you can the ieq 45 does you can set a park uh position but uh the ioptron commander if you guys have an ioptron or a, a more recent one it's just download it's downloadable through the ioptron website so it's really nice it just says like what what's your mount download it and boom it's through ascom so it's really nice okay and then we'll connect the guider here in just a moment. But uh, what I'm gonna do is, again, on the equipment, you have all these tabs here. Okay? And if you're gonna have everything else, which that's more sophisticated, that's gonna be up to you guys. So I'm gonna go back up to camera and this is where I can cool. So right here, I'm just gonna uh, tap on the snowflake. And uh, right here on the bottom, that's where it's gonna say cooling and it's gonna have the percent, okay? So um, right here, it's a sen sensor temperature and it's gonna go down here. And um, yeah, so it's gonna get like the power and everything else. So, so while we wait for that guys, um, again, it's it's cooling, so it's 1% power. So it's doing its thing. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the Sky Atlas. So uh, 
go under the framing here okay and i have selected the offline sky map now if you don't have the off offline sky map i would probably recommend the hip the hips two fits and um you can put like uh m31 okay and then the field of view depending on what your field of view is you click here you just say it's like i don't know it's pretty wide so seven percent and again this runs on your wi-fi so it does take a little bit of time to uh to load up Okay, you see how it's just a little bit of time. I'm outside, so maybe more Wi-Fi is not getting there. So there it is. And again, um, the camera parameter, so it tells you the width and the height of the camera, the pixel size, but right here, you wanna put your actual focal length. So that's where it basically says, okay, like here you are, okay? So you can use that one, or if you guys, again, download the, the offline sky map, which I highly recommend. Uh, it's really awesome and it pretty much does the same thing in half the time so let's just say heart nebula so i see or actually let's do m31 again m31 okay it comes up okay and load the image and boom that's going to be for the offline uh sky map here and it does take a little bit of time to um to load up the first time because of all the images and everything like that but once you do um see here but once you do it'll all load up so the first time you just kind of have to let it run and then after that um it'll, it'll go ahead and load up all right you guys so let's say we're so we're doing cooling um and right now we're at negative 4.90 and 31 percent power so let's go under the imaging tab here again under all of this and let's go to imaging. Let's just say that you have to focus. So I like to go, well, I'm gonna do my autofocus run, but just in case you guys don't have the autofocusing, let's go to the where it says the manual focusing, okay? Um, and again, my mount is connected to Nina and that's how I'm able to do this. So let's just go to Vega. Vega is really bright and let's slew, okay? So the mount is uh, slewing now, okay? And um, I'm hoping I am in focus at least a little bit. And again, the current uh, active filter is HA. So and it's settling right now. Okay. So why don't we do a loop? And under the imaging, um, you can go ahead and select the filter. In this case, it's just HA and then the binning, the gain, everything. And right here, all you have to do is just click on uh, for the loop and it will loop. So uh, we wanna go ahead and start the exposure and we wanna go ahead and go to the imaging tab here on the bottom. Okay. Oh, okay, so it looks like it's pretty good in focus. Actually, it's a little bit out of focus. Okay, and so this is how you would, um, and uh, by the way, in order for your plate solving to, to work, uh, you would probably have to be in focus. So I'm just gonna focus it with the Batnoff mask. I'll be right back, guys. Forgot to mention here, guys, um, you can actually change the exposure time um, and then that way you can loop for a little bit longer. And that way you can actually see the focus here. And I think I actually got it. Let's see. here. Oh, yeah, it looks I mean, it's it's good. So that's how you pretty much do the the manual, um, you know, slewing and then focusing. Uh, but let me remove the batten off mask here. Okay, so now that I have that, I'm just gonna zoom out and I'll stop it. And then let's go, let's go ahead and plate all because you notice that it's not aligned here. 
So um, right here where it says plate solving, let's click there. And then here, um, uh, thank you to my friend Everett for letting me know to do this. You have to actually say sync and then re slew the target. So you already told it to go to Vega, so it's already know where the plate solve. And then right here, um, the filter for the plate solving is going to be uh, luminous. And you go back here to the options and you go under the plate solving. And then that's where you set it to the luminance to go ahead and uh, actually do the plate solving under the, the luminance there. Let's go back to the imaging. And then let's hit play. Okay, and then image. So it's switching the filter here on the bottom. It's exposing, two seconds. Searching the image. So it's plate solving. Okay, it's solving. Okay, so it says not inside tolerance, so it's going to sync it. Okay, I just heard my telescope just move slightly. Okay. Everything's so awesome when it's in real time, that way you know nothing's going on and everything like that right <laughs> all right cool so it's done so if i go back to the imaging and i have it under uh, five seconds to the ha i'm just going to hit the loop and it's going to go in the loop and then now vega is going to be uh, in the center here boom and that's under the ha all right all right guys so let's go ahead and see how uh, we can pick a target and we can go ahead and set up a simple sequence really quick here um, all right, so let's go ahead and go to uh, frame. So I did let it load up and this is what it looks like. And again, I'm using the offline, offline sky map. This took about seven minutes to just load up um, and it has all the pictures already uh, for you. Now, let's just say I want to image the um, elephant trunk just because I want to get something in HA and I want to give that Optolong 3 nanometer uh, a test. So let me go ahead and look this up really quick. Okay, so it's IC. One, three, nine, six, and I hope that you guys like my wide field elephant shrunk with the 6200 and the cat because I just think that came out amazing. Field of view, so let's do nine percent. Okay, you see how quick that was, guys? So it was really quick and it basically loads up. So let it load up here, and again, uh, with the camera and the uh focal link it pretty much uh, loads up so right here let's, see, let's do six percent or six degree i'm sorry just get a little bit closer so there it is and i believe my camera is rotated at a 90 degree angle so it's going to be like this so anywhere you move it um if you guys notice that the um, ra and deck changes so let me just put it like over here okay and I like it, all right? So what I'm gonna do is uh, right here when it says add target to sequence, click here and, oh, I'm sorry, here. And then you put simple sequencing, okay? So it'll load up here and then it'll have the IC uh, with everything else. And this is what I really like about this guy. So the cool camera, um, Unpark the mount, a meridian flip. So let's just say I want to turn on the meridian flip, okay? Just just in case. Um, and then if you want to delay start, if you want to put more on, but let's just say you just want to do this, okay? So um, the autofocus, if you want to do like autofocus, like on filter change, the time, number of exposures, temperature, HFR, the whole thing, this is really nice. And then you got some other options here, but let's just say that you're just really, how would you say, um, uh, basic so right here we're going to say slew to target center target and start guiding okay just because i haven't done any of that and then at the end of it i want to uh, warm my camera and park my telescope okay so let's just do two exposures really quick so right here you just do just say two okay and then let's do uh 600 seconds 10 minutes ups, it's light, and then here the filter, 
which is going to be H A Benin, and then let's not do dither just because um, I'm only going to do two images. The clouds are already starting to come in. Okay, and so we have everything here, and we have everything connected. And under equipment, if you want, you don't have to connect the guider, but if you want to connect the guider, that way it can control the guiding. You just have to drop down here, connect it, and boom. And the only thing you have to do is you have to just make sure that your PhD is up and running and it's calibrated, which I just did um, offhand there. Okay. All right. So, um, and then we go here to back to the sequencer. Okay. So just make sure everything is good to go and you want to hit play. And so it is. So it's slewing and I'm going to go back to the imaging tab. Okay. And under image. So it's slowing guys and this is real time. Okay, plates all. We're trying to play tall. Oh, actually, it says the orientation is to about 270 degrees, but it's all good. It's not giving the error, but it is saying that it's out of. Okay, so that's going to be the error now, which I think it's good. Now, automatically, it's going to start guiding. And then your graph here is going to start showing the, the guiding. Okay, it's settling. Okay, and here we are. Okay, so it's guiding. Guiding, just it's okay for right now. It's a little bit windy. And boom, we start exposing. That's pretty much it, you guys. Um, it's kind of exciting because I actually get to show you my very first 10 minutes of from this camera and the filter. Um, so we'll check in here in a little bit. All right, you guys, so here we go. First sub coming in. Let's take a look here. Cheers to the first sale with the 2600. Many more to come. Oh man, I'm already impressed with this camera and that filter. Look at that. Nice. Star's looking really good too. That's awesome. 